It's a new year and a new chance for you to make a fresh start with your compliance. For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. Asking some tough questions around investigations. You may find yourself in the position that you will have to ask some very tough questions and have some very frank discussions with senior management and what to expect in terms of cost and time outlays for a significant FCPA or other anti-bribery, anti-corruption investigation. While much of these discussions will focus on the investigation process and cost, they will also allow you to begin to talk about the remediation process going forward and begin to explain why money must be budgeted for this process. One of the things rarely considered is how the investigation triggers the remediation process and what is, what is the relationship between the two. The, when issues arise warranting investigations that would rise to a board of directors level and potentially require disclosure to the government, there is usually a flurry of activity and attention. Everyone wants to know what is going on. For a short time, you will have everyone's attention. Yet it can be a tricky place because you're 15 minutes to really get everyone's full attention. And from then on, you're fighting with everybody else for the board's attention, just like the normal things in business life. It's as if they're coming and saying, okay, here's the situation as we know it. There is an investigation path. And corresponding to that, here's what we think the remediation path is and what are the outlines of what it's going to take with some dollar signs attached to it. You need to explain the cost to the board and senior management. You need to be upfront and candid and firmly stating, for us to get to this place, this is what it's going to cost. Moreover, you need to be able to show how some companies paid very large amounts, not just in the eventual fine and penalty, but also in your investigation and remediation costs. You want to show how people lost money by having to write some very big checks because they did not take this seriously and saved money because they did not have to write as big a check because they took it very seriously. And your return on investment is going to be very high if you do this well. This is easier with the information that's what was provided in the Department of Justice, or rather beginning with the DOJ pilot program from 2016 through the FCPA corporate enforcement policy up until the 2020 update to the evaluation of corporate compliance programs. One of the most difficult parts is that an investigation is often done in a way which the investigators will want to maintain as tight a control over the information and attendant attorney-client privilege as they can. The remediation process really requires output from the investigation to understand where the risk points are and what where the gaps are, both in the compliance program and in the internal controls. There is a tension there, and it needs to be structured in a way that information can be shared by those who are designing the remediation without fear of compromising the investigation. Costs must adequately be addressed to set proper expectations. This includes both direct costs and indirect costs. The biggest cost to a company during investigation is the diversion of management resources. Kind of everything stops to focus on the investigation. This indirect cost comes through largely the time commitment of senior management. If senior management has to commit 20% of its time, and that's 20% that's not going to revenue generating shareholder value protecting activities. Yet you can communicate to someone who has now gone through a full-blown investigation coupled with a federal investigation, potentially with the FBI and DOJ involved. Understanding that an all-encompassing nature of such an event is difficult to articulate, you can talk about your past experiences, where as a chief compliance officer, you may have had to deal with this. You can ask, what would happen if you spent 5% of your time on, the mat- on one matter, then 10, then 15, then 20? So this is how you can articulate to senior management what could happen during an investigation. You can explain the upside of compliance. You can do that in a way that juxtaposes the cost. And you can mention such things as if you have clear policies and people know what to do, think how much easier your life would be. Instead of having to make calls and figure out how to do it every single time, you have a clear policy. 
These same types of arguments come into play generally in areas generally considered the purview of HR, i.e. recruiting and retention. In the area of recruiting, where do you new hires from colleges come? Where do they get information about your company? If they Google your company and one of the first things they see is it's in trouble because they violated the FCPA or pay bribes to a foreign official outside the United States and then have been assessed a fine and penalty, they will get some news about these wrongdoings. Retention of current employees is the same. How would you feel if everyone in a company knew about and were more importantly embarrassed about their FCPA violation. Would that help retention? Yet even more than these types of points are about the employees in an organization. It's important that make the highest, or rather it's important to make it personal to the highest level of the management of the company and make it real so that they as an audience understand. What are you going to do about it? How would you feel about being involved in it rather than there's something out there and what are you going to do? All of these questions you need to put to senior management. What about the dreaded where else question in an investigation? The key is anticipating the question is going to come up and have an answer ready, which is we're going to do a comprehensive risk assessment of the remainder of the company. We are not going to go out and look under every leaf and check every tree, but we're going to do an extensive risk assessment and we will come back and tell you that there there either is or is not a likelihood of another problem. However, the answer could be equally, we have found a high likelihood and we're going to continue to take a deep dive until we find out if something's happened. So both are acceptable. So what are today's three key takeaways? Well, number one, A serious allegation gets serious attention of the board of directors, senior management. Use this time to move your compliance program forward. Number two, be aware of how your investigation can impact and even inform your remediation efforts. And finally, number three, be ready to deal with the dreaded where else question because it will come up and you need to be ready to address it directly to management as a part of your role as a CCO. This is Tom Fox. I hope you will enjoy this month's offering on hotlines and investigations. A 31 days to a more effective compliance program. If I could ask you to do so, would you pass on to at least one person this podcast series on the nuts and bolts of compliance as I'm trying to expand my audience base for 31 days to a more effective compliance program. I hope you'll join me again tomorrow where I take up another topic in innovation in compliance. Thanks again for listening. 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.